Welcome back to the lab. Today, Nick is holding the camera. We are doing something different. Flailing around on the bench, I'm totally unsupported, but that, that, that's fine. That's going to be tight. Well, it is with a milling machine to lift up at the end of it. That's not tight at all. Come on, Holden. Loud noises. That was just superb. Oh, yes, you've already had it off. Yeah. There will be some oil left in it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sneeze. You gotta undo these. These are screwed in to here to hold the cone of the bearings that hold the diff center in there. So you gotta undo these and then the diff center will jiggle out of there, I believe. We're gonna find out. If I'm wrong, be a long day. If you just need some more bench space, why don't you just open this? Oh, you pull, pull this out here. Yeah, and then not be as close to your working part as you were before. And put this back in here because it's adjustable. Yeah. So we can actually just set that. Well, before instead of dropping things, they drop down to another bench first. That's that's almost almost too clever. Ideally, we would secure this in some sort of a vice. What are we doing now? We've got to undo these. If you look closely, you can actually see there's a thread on here. And you can identify that this one has got a right-hand thread on it. Lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. So we know this one needs to turn that way to come undone. Well, I'll keep cracking. Do we make a tool? Should we make the tool? I don't think it'd take long to make a tool couple of bits of metal and it's just some sort of a bar thing and then we just hold the diff and we just undo it. Alternatively we get a drift that'll fit in there and see if we can just undo it without snapping the webbing off. Smash it. Smash it? Hulk smash. Yeah. Let me get a piece of wood or two just to... Smash. Uh, I'm going to smash it too hard. So we'll, we'll just use this one. keep this up it'll look like I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Not ideal right? It is leaving little marks on there. It's not really the way. That's the second worst noise in the world. Yeah, I think probably at this point we can use the technique that you used to open 44 gallon drums. Uh, a couple of screwdrivers. Screwdrivers. You got any spare flatheads I can use as chisels? Oh, you've already done it to that one. <laughs> I'd, say, I'd say any tool that's in that toolbox has been abused, you can more or less guarantee that. Oh, she's pretty tight. It's because you hammered it. Um, this is this is not necessarily a how-to video. This is 
a how we video. It's how we did it. It's not how to do it. This is uh, like screwdriver chopsticks. It's, it's only end. a matter of time before someone gets one in the eye. <laughs> Might be some young guy. Some young guy gets one in the eye. That didn't sound the way it sounded, did it? It did. Hmm. This is actually... Um... You're doing a great job. Why don't we relieve pressure on the other side? Because I imagine both bearings push. Uh... Or is, is my science wrong? No, your science is probably pretty good. My intention was to simply remove this one from the equation entirely and then, then attack the other side. You know, when you're taking off a U-bolt, you know, you can unthread one and you keep going at it, but the other one's still under tension lots oh. and then it just ends up bending something. I don't, I don't think there's any tension on the other side. No. Nah. That's the sound it wasn't making. <laughs> this is... Um... Did you just break my diff? No. I see what we've done is we've taken the tension off the carrier bearings so that um, there's no preload on that at all. So now there's axial free play. If we undo this, it's going to have a cone attached. I had one of them in Hamilton once. It's going to have a cone attached to the... Um, oh, that's pretty tight. It's trying to hurt me. We, we can't make jokes about um, drug paraphernalia and stuff and things with a company called The Lab. It's highly inappropriate. No, I was talking about road cones. Ah, cool. Because they're everywhere. That's that's our bearing. Does it look foo food? There's actually another bearing, isn't there? Yeah. So this is the bearing that we've got to get those as well then. So these, these, the seals. If they're worn. We just changed them. We're here. We just changed them. I just thought we we're gonna do the tail shaft. Are we? I thought that's what we we're gonna do. We can do this too. Oh, I think we're doing this, aren't we? But we can't get the parts. We'll get the parts. Okay. We'll see our mates at White Cattle Bearings. Who? White Cattle Bearings. That'll just about come out of there, but not quite. So we'll just do rinse and repeat for the other side. This is not gonna work. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Let's put this over this side so we're really confused. So which way does this one thread? I'm pretty sure this is a right hand thread as well. Do you know that because you smashed it before or off camera? Uh, no, I would never do such a thing. We were carefully searching on the intervals. Is, sorry, is that what? I didn't I didn't search anything. Does Marty move? Does Moog call it the intervals? Is that what it's called? Who? No, oh, some fella off the internet. Now, if that appears to be going in, then I'm turning it the wrong way. It looks like it might be going in. No, I think it's coming out. It's just a, it's a very fine thread for the diameter of the... Good chat. Good chat. Is it rebuilt yet? Chuck it in, she's good. Yeah. See ya. Here we go. What do you reckon of the condition of that? Uh, so, I'm going to we're going to do something in a minute to um, to explore the condition of those. This is a interesting proposition. How do we extract? Have you tasted it yet? No, that's something that someone used to do on the internet. But yeah, that's how you do it. It's heavy. That's where all the metal is in the diff, eh? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So this is a LSD, I believe because it's got the, the interweb told me that if that was one piece like that, that's the LSD. Oh, it's set it on the back of the diff as well. You don't read stuff, you just look at things. There is some metal here. 
that is shiny in here. I can feel it. I thought you said you don't have any emotions. Oh, you can physically. I, I was too slow with that. I was trying to think of something. I came up with Spock, but it wasn't going to be relevant to youngsters <laughs> these days. So You can physically feel that there's stuff in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not emotionally. Yeah, definitely. Look. That, that'd be what we would call pearl if that was an automotive paint. It's a good looking paint. Yeah. It actually wouldn't be too, too bad. We'd call that diff oil. Oh, well, it's like a... Diff oil deluxe or something. <laughs> it's a bronze kind of black paint job. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool, man. So we can... Well, what are we going to do? We can clean these and then you can zoom in on them and see the surface condition to check for, basically check for contamination on the, the bit where the bearings run. These are done. Uh, let's, let's hold this um, here. See all the marking on there? That's not very good. If we take a photo and zoom in, you'll you'd be amazed how um terrible that surface will be it doesn't look bad by eye well now my phone i'm zoomed in pretty good oh yeah that shows it yeah and it does look terrible well yeah it looks like i took a self-portrait okay all right let's get them all to bits so what are we looking at um my lotto ticket from last night that's about how much of a winner that was so there's quite a lot of pitting on this yeah is that stuff just where your finger is? I can feel that. You drag a finger on that, a nail wow. on that? Yeah, okay, you drag a nail on that, you'll feel it. Yeah, I can feel gloves. it through the rubber glove. I mean, sometimes you don't That's feel- That's what the doctor said. Sometimes you don't feel things when you got a rubber glove on, but <laughs> when you go- when It's you, done, eh? When you go raw- I'm glad we went there, um, not with yeah. the jokes, but with the changing the bearing, because that definitely needs to, 100%. That's probably where our noise was. So this bearing here, this is the larger bearing cone that's holding the pinion. It is done. Uh, especially in this area here, we can see there's surface contamination. It looks like a road surface rather than a nice, very smooth, shiny uh, stainless steel bench top or something like that. You want it all bling bling, but like glass, this is very rough, very growly growly. What is a V8? Some things have happened away off camera, haven't they, Glenn? Off camera, not for public consumption. Yeah, we undid some stuff. We got some bearings off. But we had to do without, it in a very unscientific without way. Without two jaw soft face bearing puller. Just put that in it. We didn't use this at all. That's just the decorative purposes for the video. Make it, make it look more professional. How did these ones come off? Well, we took those off very carefully in one piece. Uh, very, very professionally, no damage to them whatsoever. But that was great. <laughs> they, they come apart really good. Yeah. Yeah. This is not a how-to. This is not how to do it. This is how we did it. They're two very different videos. You're welcome. Let's go get some bearings. That's us. We've got all the bearings. Look, that one was mint. That we didn't do that at all. No, no, that was done. Um, but there was significant wear. Oh yeah, bearings were yuck. So this is this is absolutely a, a good idea. Like they don't cost. In the scheme of things, how big is your fuel tank? Not very, Eighty liters. Not very big. Is it not very big? No. So in my ute anyway, it's 100 litres, give or take. It usually takes 100 litres to fill it up. And in New Zealand now, that's approximately $290 or something to fill the tank up, isn't it? Depends where you get your petrol. I've, so, put, a, I've put a down payment on my next fill up of petrol. Yeah. So a set of bearings for your diff is probably going to cost 
I'd say less than a tank of gas. So. It'll save you fuel. Do it. Uh, mm, technically, yeah. If you could ever measure that, I'd be impressed. You'd probably save more That's in rolling resistance. Yeah. You'd probably save more in rolling resistance from uh, having tyres better inflated. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it is one of those things. Efficiency of components is absolutely 100% to do with fuel efficiency of vehicles. This is why manufacturers are building engine components of um, minimal size to do the job. They don't just put in massive, big, huge pistons and conrods that will take a 1,000 horsepower for your 150 horsepower Corolla because you drag, resistance, momentum, fuel consumption. Yeah. So, shonky bearings that are going rah, 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 rah. If you're making noise, you're using energy to make that noise. And you're making heat, and that takes energy as well. And the energy comes from somewhere, and it's your motor. How much energy and noise went into this? Nothing. They came apart just instantly. There was no drama at all. We just, like, that's completely 100% installed. And we just took them off like that. That's how it worked. Turned the camera off. If you can't fix it, wreck it so no one else can. Why are you wearing that funny hat? Uh, it's all the rage in here, isn't it? What everyone's wearing. Where's yours? In the car. Should we take the paper away from the well? What about that can of explosives? enough. Well done. So did we just use science? Fighting a little bit. At this point. Fighting a little bit. It's not being nice. Pass. Sometimes you just have to fight in what you believe in. damage it if you're not seriously careful. Can't quite get that side. It's coming. There we go.